she re asterisk asterisk the cursed game asterisk asterisk it was a rainy friday night when ethan stumbled upon the game browsing through an obscure forum dedicated to vintage and abandoned video games he found a thread about a mysterious title called the abyss according to the post it was a game that had disappeared shortly after its release in the early 90s Rumors swirled about its eerie atmosphere and unsettlingly realistic graphics which were ahead of its time. Intrigued, Ethan downloaded the game, ignoring the warnings from other users who claimed it was cursed. The game file was surprisingly small. As it installed, a cold draft swept through Ethan's apartment, causing the hair on his neck to stand up. He brushed it off as a draft from the old windows and clicked on the icon. The screen flickered before displaying the title, The Abyss. The opening screen was simple, a black background with white gothic text and an image of an ancient, decrepit mansion. The soundtrack was a soft, haunting melody, almost like a lullaby. Ethan selected New Game, and the screen faded to black before revealing a first-person perspective. He was standing at the entrance of the mansion, rain pouring down in sheets much like the weather outside. As he moved forward, the game's realism struck him. The sound of rain and thunder, the creaking of the wooden door as he pushed it open, the musty smell that seemed to emanate from his computer screen. It was immersive, almost too real. He entered the grand foyer, his footsteps echoing through the cavernous space. Ethan navigated through dimly lit hallways, discovering notes and diaries left by previous occupants. They spoke of strange noises, shadows that moved on their own, and a presence that watched from the darkness. Each entry was more disturbing than the last. The deeper he went, the more the mansion seemed to come alive. Doors slammed shut behind him, whispers echoed through the halls, and fleeting shadows danced just out of sight. He reached a grand staircase leading to the basement. A chill ran down his spine as he descended, the air growing colder with each step. The basement was a labyrinth of stone corridors and iron doors. At the far end, he found a large, ornate door with a symbol he didn't recognize. As he approached, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. His hand trembled as he clicked to open it. The room was a ritual chamber with a large, circular stone altar in the center surrounded by strange symbols etched into the floor. The walls were lined with ancient tomes and grotesque statues that seemed to watch his every move. On the altar lay an open book, its pages filled with illegible scrawled text. Ethan felt an overwhelming urge to read the book. He leaned in, and as he did, the screen flickered. The text on the page began to shift and change forming words in a language he couldn't understand. Suddenly the power went out, plunging his apartment into darkness. The only light came from the faint glow of his laptop screen. The whispers from the game seemed to spill into the room, growing louder and more frantic. Panic set in, and Ethan reached for his phone, but it was dead. He felt a presence behind him, cold breath on his neck. He spun around, but there was nothing there, just the darkness. He turned back to the game, desperate to shut it down, but the screen had changed. His character was no longer alone in the room. A tall, shadowy figure stood behind him, its eyes glowing red. The whispers turned into a cacophony of voices, speaking in tongues. Ethan's hands trembled as he tried to exit the game, but the mouse wouldn't move, and the keyboard was unresponsive. The figure on the screen moved closer, its form becoming more defined. It was a grotesque, twisted version of a man with elongated limbs and a face contorted in a perpetual scream. The whispers turned to screams, echoing around the room, filling Ethan's mind with terror. Suddenly the figure lunged at the screen, and Ethan felt a searing pain in his chest. He gasped, clutching his chest as the pain intensified, spreading through his body. He collapsed to the floor, the world around him fading to black. When he awoke, he was no longer in his apartment. He was inside the game, standing in the ritual chamber. The pain was gone, but a sense of dread filled him. The door behind him was gone, replaced by a solid stone wall. The only way out was through the altar. 
As he approached, the whispers returned, more sinister than before. The book on the altar was open, its pages glowing with an eerie light. Ethan felt a compulsion to read it, to understand its secrets. He reached out, and as his fingers touched the pages, the room began to spin. He was no longer alone. Figures emerged from the shadows, the previous occupants of the mansion, their faces twisted in agony and fear. They surrounded him, their eyes hollow, their mouths moving in silent screams. Ethan tried to back away, but his feet were rooted to the spot. The figures closed in, their hands reaching out to him. As they touched him, he felt their pain, their fear, their hopelessness. It was overwhelming, suffocating. He screamed, but no sound came out. The last thing he saw was the grotesque figure from the game standing over him, its mouth opening in a hideous grin. Ethan's body was found days later, slumped over his desk, the game still running on his laptop. The authorities ruled it a heart attack, but those who knew him couldn't shake the feeling that something more sinister had occurred. The game, the abyss, vanished from his computer, leaving no trace. The forum thread where he found the game was deleted, and any mention of it was scrubbed from the internet. But the whispers persisted, spreading among those who dared to search for the cursed game. And somewhere in the dark corners of the web, the abyss waits, ready to claim its next victim.